Hey everybody, this is Simon Cornelius with Page One Doctors, and I'm going to give you a presentation on entities and schema. It's a very, very, very short presentation. This is like 10 hours condensed into what, maybe 30 minutes. So buckle up. This is meant to just whet your appetites, give you a taste of what entities and schema is all about. All right, so without further ado, we'll get going and let's see here. The magic of PowerPoint. Here we go. Now, I don't know about you, but me, when I'm in a presentation, I'm sitting there just drinking from a fire hose. I'm almost like my brain is exploding. Now, I don't want you to be that way. I want you to actually take this information in bite sized pieces, digest it and use it over time. Don't expect to learn everything right now because you might forget about it tomorrow or the day after, but we'll talk about that in the next slide. So don't be this guy. So accelerated learning is something I learned about years and years ago. Basically, it says at the very top of the pyramid up here, where you are just listening to someone speak. That is the absolute worst way to learn something. The absolute worst. It goes in one ear and out the other. Maybe that was me at school. Now, better than that is reading something. I like reading books, as you can see. I have a stack of books. I like reading ebooks and Kindles and all those good things. That's a little bit better, but we need to get more of our senses engaged in order to learn this stuff. Now, schema to me in the beginning was, it was like a foreign language, like Klingon. I didn't understand it, but I, the more I immersed myself in it, the more I started using with these techniques, the more it made sense. Let's go down. You can see everything audiovisual, demonstrating. So demonstrating is, let's say you're showing someone how to bake a cake. You're showing them, you're demonstrating how to use the mixing tools and the ingredients. You're doing it maybe on a video as well. So that's even better. Then there's discussion. If you can start dis discussing with people, maybe you have a mastermind. That's how you start to learn because you get feedback, you ask questions, and there's there's dynamics within the group. And also practice doing it. Don't be afraid to mess up. Take what you're learning here today and put it into a test site. Make mistakes. It's okay to mess up. Don't be afraid. So mess around with it in a site. And then the the best way, in my opinion, this is what I am telling you from experience, the best way is by teaching someone else what you just learned. That, my friends, is is going to be the key to you learning this stuff really, really well. All right. First off, <clears throat> I like playing games. And I like to give you information in multiple different formats. So let's play a game. Read this text. Okay, I'm not going to actually read it out to you, but read this text, like pause the video, read it, and tell me, can you figure out what this text is all about? Can you? Probably not, right? How about if I take out, and the reason why is I've taken out all of the nouns in this particular piece of text. So you have the adjectives, the verbs, the pronouns, and all those other parts of speech, except for the nouns. Now, how about if I just give you the nouns? No other parts of speech, but just the nouns. Ham sandwich, slices of bread, surface, slices of ham. By now, you probably realize that this piece of text is all about making a ham sandwich. And you, my friends, would be correct. This is the full text. Okay, briefly, let's go back two slides. If you saw this, you have no clue. You might have some kind of idea, but you're really not 100% sure. When I show you the nouns, you're thinking, hmm, I'm actually pretty confident this is all about making a ham sandwich. And you would be right. So that's what I want you to get into your head right now is nouns in this context are very important to understand the meaning. All right, let's have a simple definition of an entity. It is the same as, in quotes, same as a noun. Okay, there are some entity purists who will disagree with me and I will concur with their opinion, but an entity and a noun for this de demonstration are pretty much one and the same thing. It's a person, a place, or a thing. 
and if it has a page in Wikipedia, it's usually an entity. All right, so think of an entity as equivalent to a noun. So also, I want you to think about it like a digital idea, kind of like a sticky post-it note, where you have information about the entity. So it has information, we'll talk about this later on, in an entity card. And also, really important over here, make sure that when you talk about entities, you you think about how they are related to other entities. I'll talk about relationships a lot more. So you'll hear about entities and relationships till you're like, no, until you've just got them imprinted on your retina. All right. So next, <clears throat> this is a simple ham sandwich. Or is it? We've probably seen these before, haven't we? You've got You've got your bread, you've got your lettuce, onion, tomato, and all sorts of good stuff in there. We've all seen, we've probably all made them before. Now, and a ham sandwich is basically an entity. All right, now, the next slide, I want you to actually pause it because there's a lot of information in there. If you can make the video really big, then you'll get to see more of this, okay? This is a rough, I guess, entity map of a ham sandwich. I know you can't really see this unless you stop it and pause, but here is the entity of a ham sandwich. All right. Now I've also given you different types of ham sandwich. You've got your gluten free, your kid friendly, blah, 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 vegan ham sandwiches. You've got different types of ham sandwiches. Okay. So think about a ham sandwich that can have like children entities or child child entities of the main entity. So now you have different types of ham sandwiches. Now over here, right, this is the meat and potatoes, no pun intended, of the ham sandwich. You have ingredients. Now I've just simplified it. You can go to town on all of these. So rather than go through every one of these tiny micro dots on this page, I'm going to just go through. Let's talk about the ingredients bread ham onions tomato and lettuce okay your basic ingredients okay and there's the different options or different types of sandwiches so we have different types these are also entities within themselves and then you have ingredients so each one of these are also an entity bread is an entity ham onions tomato lettuce okay let's start drilling down the entity of ham sandwich has a, a what's called a property and the property here is ingredients and we have the values in here bread ham lettuce onion tomato these like i said before are other entities but they are related to there's the key thing there they are related to a ham sandwich because they are part of the ham sandwich now related entities of ham sandwich or you could say the child entities gluten-free grilled ham vegan vegetarian kid friendly right pause for a few seconds if you have to and look at this slide because this if when you see you get this and you start explaining to other people you will get it up here and it won't be that guy on the first screen with your head exploding next bread well bread is a very generic entity. There's different types of bread, isn't there? Oat bread, rye bread, multigrain, pumpernickel, spelt, sourdough, white. You can go find, you can Google the different types of bread. There's, I don't know, dozens, hundreds of different types of bread out there. So you could have literally, uh, if you had a website about ham sandwiches, you could have ham sandwich recipes with oat bread, with rye bread, with multigrain, the list goes on and on. But wait, there's more how about ham a good old ham sandwich it's got to have ham what kind of ham do you have in there you got black forest smoked ham virginia sweet cured parma ham i've never heard of parma ham before serrano ham and i've never heard of capicola but i believe it's a type of ham and honey glazed right again you can have dozens or hundreds of different types of ham so when you are describing your ham sandwich make sure you list the ingredients. If you offer, let's say you have a shop where you offer multiple ha types of ham sandwiches, maybe you can list the types of ham that are available to build that entity, which is your ham sandwich. Now, of course, I'm simplifying this. You take this concept and apply it to your website for your niche, whatever that is. Lettuce, you get the idea, right? There's different types of lettuce, bib, romaine, 
Bat, um, Batavia, Fris, Frise. I've never heard of some of these before either. So there's, again, different types of lettuce, all right? And then onions, the same thing over here, different types of onions, red, yellow, Texas, Spanish, Walla Walla onions, etc., etc. You get the idea. Is this starting to, to make sense to you about tomatoes? Or if you're from the motherland, it's tomatoes. There's different types of tomatoes or tomatoes. I've never heard of kumato tomatoes. I guess it rhymes with tomato, but there you go, different types of tomatoes. Cool. Now, um, now I want to talk about, and this is my opinion, this is kind of how I think, is um, how I believe that Google is now treating content. You see, we used to be all about keywords. What keywords do I want to rank for? You put your keywords in the title, the heading tag, you stuff keywords all over the place. But I believe that we've now moved from keyword-based search to entity-based search. So what do I mean by that? Well, if my slide will advance, here we go. Right. Search engines, I'll just read this to you. They understand the semantic context and relationships. There's that word relationships again. They understand the context between these different words or these entities that we're talking about. They're, I believe they're really focusing more on entities now. And it's really tied to what we as humans are searching for, the user intent. Now, uh, entities versus keywords. You can pause the screen and, and look at this. But I believe that entities, this is my opinion, this is my, my the way I think, Entity is an idea or thing with a deeper meaning, right? Whereas a keyword is just a word. It's a word they pull out of the dictionary, okay? Entities are also linked with other ideas or things or other entities. There's that word relationship again, whereas keywords, they just stand there with no connection. They just are on an island by themselves. <clears throat> and they also, I think, they also, the entities relate to the user intent, okay? Alrighty. Now the knowledge graph, really important. We talked about this before in a, in a previous slide, entity cards. Google has amassed this massive database of things, information about entities and all their properties and all the values of those properties, billions and billions. And this is called a knowledge graph. Now inside of the knowledge graph, there are these things called entity cards, C-A-R-D-S. And these are facts about this particular entity, including the relationships with other entities. You see that word again, relationships? Once you're done, you'll be waking up at like two o'clock in the morning thinking about hmm, the relationship between entity A and entity B. Cool or cool. And Google, uh, Google loves to collect information. So we want to feed it information about what your site is all about okay so don't be afraid to feed the beast it wants to be fed all right deep breath and a quick drink cool by the way i'm drinking from a cup which is an entity inside the cup is water which is another entity the water is related to the cup because it's inside the cup cool huh Alrighty, now let's talk about the relationships again. Let me move myself out of the way. In fact, I will take myself out altogether. How's that? In here, I want to represent the universe of known entities. Google's knowledge graph is over here on the right side. And all these are all these circles here are entities. So there's millions, billions of entities inside here. And these black lines are all relationships between entities within this knowledge graph so keep this in mind this is google's knowledge graph here's your website your entity you're trying to demonstrate to google the relationship there's that word again the relationship between your entity which is your website and google's knowledge graph now inside your website you've got multiple entities you have a home page a bio page you have a services page about page contact page and images, et cetera, et cetera. Your job in building your website is to build these relationships between this node here 
and this node here because Google knows all about these nodes over here. It has amassed a ton of data about this, about everything it knows about. And you're just trying to tell Google, hey, here's my website and it is related to this concept or this topic or this entity over here. You know about it, so I'm just telling you that my website is related. Okay. Now, every good presentation needs to have a, a picture of a cute cat or a dog or something like that. Well, here's one for me. This is my cat. He's a uh, he's my helper sometimes. If you know, if you have cats and dogs, you know what that means. So I took a picture of him with my with my phone and used an app called Google Lens. And I said, I, I just took a picture, didn't give it any instruction. And it came back and said, this is a picture of a Maine Coon cat. Cool. It was correct. So Google understands entities inside pictures. That's really important to know. If you're putting pictures on the website, make sure that they are at least related to the topic. If you're doing a, a roofing website and you have a, a page about roofing, put a picture of a roof, someone working on a roof or shingles or something. Don't have a picture of a, I don't know, a tree or uh, sofas or some random stuff. So that's a quick aside, but Google Lens will tell you what entities it finds in these pictures, okay? Now, entity relationships, there's a relationship thing again. Step one, identify, sorry, define the entities that you want to have on your page, on your website. Tell you, tell the search engines, here's my entities and here's, here's how they are related to other known entities, okay? Entity cards, let's dive into this in more detail. Here's an entity card about a ham sandwich, right? You can go Google ham sandwich and this entity card or this knowledge panel shows up. It tells you what's in there, it even tells you that, wow, well, it was originally created in the United Kingdom. Who, who knew? There's some pictures of, of ham sandwiches. So that's an entity card for a ham sandwich. Here's an entity card for Dallas, which is where I live. Right, there's an entity card there for Dallas. And also there's an entity card here for, and I do a lot of work with dentists, so clear aligners or Invisalign. There's an entity card for clear aligners too. And you can find these in, in Google just by doing a Google search. Right, now where are we? Enough of the theory, let's put it to use. All right, we've gone through a ton of stuff. And we want to see how do we use this. Right, Invisalign. I want to create a kick-ass page all about the topic of Invisalign. I want to become the authority on the topic of Invisalign. I want to make my client, let's call him Dr. Smith. He's going to be the best dentist in the entire country, or at least say in Dallas, who knows all about Invisalign. Great. So I want to be the authority on the topic of Invisalign. I want to cover more of the topic than any other competition. And I want to have make sure my pages focused is only on Invisalign. Right now, it could if it gets to be like two, three, four, five thousand words, you might want to consider breaking it up a little bit. Here's how I do this. I'm going to run through these really quick, but you can pause and rewind and take notes. My my high level strategy is this. I look for all of the competitors. Let's say I'm doing an Invisalign dentist in Dallas, Texas. I'm searching for Invisalign Dallas. I look at all the pages that have Invisalign in them, but be, be careful. I want to make sure that they are just the inner service pages, just the inner service pages. I don't want a home page on the inner service pages. And then go find all of the entities which are on this page, right? On, for all of these com all these competitors and then combine them into one list now and then clean out anything which is irrelevant like say teeth cleaning or disease or anything like that so now I'm, I've got all this list of these entities which show up in all of my competitors websites okay with me so far if not pause rewind you'll get this now here's how I do this uh, this is a plug for a tool that I developed because there was nothing out there and I don't think there is today to go through and find out what is on the page that I need to include in my page. 
So up at the top, and I just, these are not my clients. These are just random ones I chose. <clears throat> this is one that was down on like page three, okay, Invisalign, uh, some, some dentist in Dallas. And I picked like the first one, two, three, four, five, I think five, just to, to give you an example. And these are all the entities that my tool found. And this is the tool, by the way, schema.zone. Okay, it found, uh, here's all the entities. So tooth, clear aligners, uh, technology, blah, blah, blah. T is for target, which is my site over here. And then one, two, three, four, five are the five competitors over here. So I'm looking at all of these entities, seeing what entities my site has versus what's on the competition. Now, over here, what I'm trying to do is what entities are found in the corpus? And the corpus is like the entire uh, set of websites I was giving it to analyze. So here I'm looking at what entities are the most popular and they're sorted by how many and then also they're sorted by, I think, average count. Over here in this graph up here, the yellow is my target site. And I ideally want to get my yellow line up to about average over here. Some of these might be just like entity stuffing, so I want to ignore those, but keep try to keep this yellow line up to about where average is for these sites. With me so far? So again, <clears throat> find all the entities across my competition, or what entities my client site has, do a side-by-side -side comparison, and then add these entities if they are appropriate into my site. All right, cool, next. Uh, this is just to zoom in. So I had all the different, the top 15 or so, the top 15 entities across all of the competitor sites, including my own. <clears throat> this is just the, like, from left to right, popular, most popular to not so popular. All right. So this one here is the blown up view of, here's all the entities that were found across all of these websites, like Align Technology, which is the manufacturer of Invisalign. And these are all the words that triggered this entity. So now I've got this list of every entity that I want to include. Now, this is just a partial list. Every entity that I want to include on my page. And these are all the words which I can include on the page to start triggering these entities. Cool or cool. Now, real quick, I'm going to go through this again uh, to finish this off. So create a page outline for the service. It meets the searches the user's search intent, uh, research, we've gone through this, research other entities, and then conditions retreat. You can read this and apply it to your niche is my point, okay? So this is my high level strategy, super high level, but apply it to your niche. Bio pages. I love bio pages. I want to build these out for every practitioner that I have on my website. Doctors, dentists, lawyers, CPAs, anyone that touches your money, or has an impact on your health. All right, let me bring myself back over here now. Cool. All right, how's everyone doing so far? Are we tracking? So a bio page is like a resume or curriculum vitae, or CV to, to those of you in Europe. I want you to think about all of the entities it has, like your dentist, doctor, CPA, how they're related. So come on, here we go. So this one here, did I skip one? Nope. So here we have a person entity card. You got the name, where they graduated from, their name, their, their title, their colleagues, okay, their professional credentials, their occupation, description, which is their bio, pictures, social profiles. Now, we also, what a lot of people miss out is, who is their employer? What affiliations do they have? And you'll see on the next page, there's this massive mind map i call it of some things that i really want you to take a look at what do they know about okay this one here let me move myself out of the way again okay this one i want you to really take a look at pause it and go through if it, if it's on a big screen even better these are the types of ways that i integrate different entities into a page what organizations do they belong to Okay, reference the known entities who so are building those relationships. What organizations are they affiliated with? Again, making relationships with known entities. Where did they go to school? What's their personal profiles? 
where is this page located so all these things on here you can pause the video and look through this but these are all the things that you want to include on the page because you're making relationships with known entities extremely extremely important and <clears throat> this final slide this final slide is where i want to oh one second here this final slide here are some resources that i will give you to take a look at so you've got text razor uh, google nlp schema zone chat gpt but caution inspect what you expect for sure and uh, if you really want to get into the weeds wordnet.princeton.edu there's an enti there's an entity seo guide on search engine land these last two these are really really good tools okay really really good tools that i encourage you to check out over mm -hmm. here so entity clouds they help build relationships between entities i love that tool and then also content sprout which makes really really good content uh, gets you some entity rich content so anyway hopefully that will give you an insight we've been going for what 35 minutes or so like i said before this is a huge huge topic half an hour is really not going to get you too much information but enough to give you that little bit of insight into how entities work so been a pleasure hopefully you've got some some value out of this and we'll see you sometime in down the road take care bye-bye